waste, the scourge of modern civilization. Despite a variety of recycling systems, waste is piling up all over the world and it's getting worse by the day. All kinds of waste, in many cases even toxic waste, are dumped in massive landfill sites. These sites have been a burden for the environment and mankind for generations. We want convenience, mobility, wherever we may be. That's why our society is thirsting for more and more energy. Even though natural resources have already been substantially diminished, energy consumption is increasing year by year, all over the world, even in inaccessible places. Energy provides comfort. Energy quickly turns icy cold into cozy warmth. And energy makes us mobile. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could use excess waste to produce the energy we so desperately need? A modern dream for people in the late 20th century. A wonderful fairy tale if waste could be turned into pure energy. It is a fairy tale that has come true. In 2002, a bold idea became concrete reality. A test plant was built, the Blue Tower of Herten in the middle of Germany. After years of research, a physicist, Dr. Heinz-Jürgen Mühlen, and a process engineer, Dr. Christoph Schmidt, developed the process of staged reforming. The blue tower takes biomasses, that means any hydrocarbons, and first pyrolyzes them. In other words, we heat them up to a temperature of 450 to 500 degrees centigrade, and as a result, the biomass is converted into both a gas and a residue. This residue is known as char. We see the same process in a charcoal kiln. In the case of biomasses, frequently 80% of it enters the gas phase. It may even be as much as 90% if the biomass is of animal origin. It is this 90% that we focus on. That's what we want for further processing or refining, as we say. We mix these gases with steam. The steam then reacts with these gases at high temperatures, close to 1000 degrees centigrade, and as a result we obtain products which can be used in generators to produce electricity, or can be synthesized to produce other products, alcohol or biofuels, for example. The process was perfected in the Blue Tower of Herten. Here, for the past three years, they have been using waste to produce energy, or, to be more precise, a precious gas which can supply energy to homes for heating and cooking, or which can also be used in cogeneration plants to produce both electricity and heat. The plant is fed with biomass. Biomass is ultimately everything organic. For example, wood, rotten food, tomato skins, chicken droppings, pig's blood, cattle blood. All this is biomass. Waste, which up to now has been disposed of at great expense everywhere. Piles of tree-cut and organic waste, food packaging, cardboard boxes and paper can still be found in every landfill site. This is unnecessary because it is all biomass and therefore fuel for the blue tower. The biomass is put into this container and drops into this funnel. This is what the whole thing looks like. The biomass is then dispensed from this funnel and transported by these two big screws into the storage tank. The storage tank then dispenses this material into the pyrolysis unit where it is converted into gases and solids. The blue energy miracle takes place inside the tower in three solid bed reactors. Through exposure to heat in the pyrolysis unit, the waste decomposes into two main components, approximately 20% char and 80% pyrolysis gas. While the gas rises for further refinement, the char enters a furnace. The hot flue gas produced there heats special heat carrier pellets which ensure the necessary temperatures later in the process. No other fuels are required for staged reforming.
In the blue tower, the heat transfer pellets are heated up to temperatures as high as 1000 degrees centigrade. Then the force of gravity pulls them down into the reformer. From the reformer, they then fall back into the pyrolysis unit. After pyrolysis, they are separated from the char and ash components and are then transported back to the top of the tower, preheated again, and then go through the whole process once more. The gas produced in the pyrolysis stage is refined in the reformer at around 900 degrees. Steam is added here. At the reforming stage, the organic compounds react to smaller molecules. This produces a hydrogen-rich gas which, for the most part, is free from condensable hydrocarbons. The water required for the steam may even be contained in the biomass itself. If you get wood from the forest, it contains 50% moisture. If you season it, it will contain 25% moisture. Depending on the biomass, we need approximately 30% water as a reactant, that is, as a reaction agent. That's plenty. After the reforming process, the product gas is purified. Dust and small particles are removed. The gas is cooled and it is also electrostatically filtered. Then it is ready for use. You can produce energy from the gas, for example, by using it, for instance, in a block-type thermal power plant to generate electricity and heat. You could also generate energy in fuel cells at the same time, for example. Another promising option would be to use the gas to produce synthetic fuels. What's left is ash from the char combustion process. Even some of this ash can still be put to economic use. If we take household waste separation, for example, which might contain 50, 60, 70 percent biomass, we can assume that there are some really toxic components in it, and this ash will have to be vitrified. It has to be melted, and then the material can be used, for example, as metalling in road construction. On the other hand, there may also be very pure materials. For example, it's quite disgusting really, chicken droppings or bird droppings in general. As we all know, that's a fertilizer. And if we treat this ash carefully, that is, if we don't melt it down, but instead keep it in a state where the ash remains solid, we can produce a valuable resource, a raw material for the fertilizer industry. The quantities are enormous and, from a commercial point of view, it's a very interesting product. Basically, the Blue Tower can be set up anywhere as a standalone solution. As a decentral system, it has no special requirements. Staged reforming is particularly cost-effective when the waste is accumulated nearby. Even in remote locations, it can usually be operated easily and economically.